Hi, this is the first lecture in the series of autocoids and respiratory pharmacology. This topic is about histamine and antihistaminic drugs. Now histamine is a biogenic amine which is formed from decarboxylation of histidine. It is also an autocoid which means that it is produced and acts locally. That is why it is also a local hormone. It is mainly present in the lungs, GIT, skin, placenta and liver. It is released mainly from mast cells and basophils in response to histamine liberators which can be a variety of different things such as an antigen antibody reaction, food that some people are allergic to, bile salts, drugs such as morphine, D-tubocurarine, dextran and hydralazine, venom and trauma. Now when histamine is released, there are four types of histamine receptors that it acts on. All of these are G protein coupled receptors H1, H2, H3 and H4. Now H1 is a GQ coupled receptor, H2 is a GS, H3 is GI and so is H4. Now GQ coupled receptor H1 is primarily involved in anaphylactic shock and inflammation. It does this by primarily five ways by increasing capillary dilatation via nitric oxide release not smooth muscle. This way it decreases blood pressure and contributes to shock. It also increases capillary permeability by contraction of endothelial pericytes by increasing intracellular calcium concentration. It also constricts bronchiolar, bronchiolar smooth muscle sorry, via IP3 DAG pathway which increases intracellular cell, uh, calcium concentration. It also helps in pain and pruritus mechanisms by activation of peripheral nociceptor receptors. It also decreases AV nodal conduction and thus has a negative effect on cardiac muscle. H2 is mainly involved in gastric acid secretion. It is present on the parietal cells in stomach. It has also beta 1 like actions. It increases parietal cell gastric acid secretion and thus promotes ulcers. It increases SA nodal rate, positive inotropy and increased automaticity. Now the H3 receptor is primarily an autoreceptor like the alpha 2 autoreceptor. It is mainly involved in the negative feedback and thus decrease histamine levels in brain, lungs and gastric mucosa. H4 is mainly involved in inflammatory response. That is, it finds its, its action in chemotaxis and cytokine secretion. Now many histamine analogues such as beta histine, it can, they can be used in vertigo of Meniere's disease. We will discuss this in more detail at the end of this video. But just know this for now. Let's see antihistaminic drugs now. Antihistaminic drugs or H1 antagonists are competitive blockers that is they are reversible if there is massive degranulation of mast cells or basophils so that histamine can replace them. They require hepatic metabolism because they are lipid soluble. They also cross blood brain barrier 
and have CNS side effects also cross placenta and have teratogenic effects. Now antihistaminic drugs are mainly classified into first generation and second generation drugs. The first generation drugs or conventional drugs are classified separately because they have special properties. Number one, it is anti-muscarinic, thus it has all the usual symptoms like urinary retention, constipation. It acts as local anesthetic because of sodium channel blocking effect. It acts as an anti-emetic and anti-motion sickness because of blocking of M, M and H1 receptors in the vestibular apparatus and vomiting center in the CNS. It is also anti-Parkinsonian and CNS depression due to H1 blockade of course. Now the major drugs involved in the first generation antihistamines are diphenhydramine. This is a widely sold OTC drug. The second is promethazine. Its important property is its local anesthetic action. Third is chlorpheniramine. It is known for its CNS stimulation effects. And lastly, medicine is used for motion sickness. Now a mnemonic to remember these four drugs is as I am from the first generation dip me properly in chlorine. Now you can see the DIP in diphenhydramine, me in the medicine, pro properly in promethazine and chlorine chlorpheniramine. I hope that makes sense. It did to me. Now the important uses of the first generation antihistaminics are quite a many besides from allergies. One is allergy of course. It is used in all types of allergies such as rhinitis, dermatitis, conjunctivitis, urticaria etc. It is used in motion sickness and vertigo due to its muscarinic and histaminic blocking effects. It is used in nausea vomiting with pregnancy and chemotherapy due to its same muscarinic and histaminic blocking effects. It is used as pre-oxidation due to its histamine blocking effect. It is also used as an over-the-counter sleep aid and cold medication because it helps the patient sleep well. It is also used in acute management of extra pyramidal symptoms. Now the pharmacokinetics is very simple. It is well absorbed after oral and parenteral administration, widely distributed, metabolized in liver and excreted in urine. The adverse effects are mainly due to H1 blockade, which are sedation, drowsiness, lack of concentration, headache, fatigue, weakness, weakness etc. GIT symptoms are nausea, vomiting, loss of appetite, etc. and antimuscarinic effects. Now the second generation antihistaminics cannot cross blood brain barrier. That's why they are used only in allergies and they have no antimuscarinic, no anti-motion, no sedation effects. No antiemetic effect, of course. They are only used in allergies, that is their only use. Now, the major drugs involved in this class are cetirizine, it also inhibits H1 release as if blocking H1 receptors was not enough. It also blocks H1 release. Secondly, loratadine. It doesn't cross the CNS, of course, and rarely causes cardiac arrhythmias. Third is fexofenadine, which does not cross CNS and rare arrhythmias. 
Now a mnemonic that I forgot to show here was Cephalo that is C E P H A L O but here it is used as C E L O F E, -F -E Cephalo. I hope you got that. Now one last point about anti vertigo drugs is that any sort of drugs actually um, can work as an anti vertigo I don't know why but uh, drugs like H1 blockers, anticholinergics, phenothiazines which is uh, antipsychotic, H1 analogs, uh, diuretics, benzodiazepines, uh, antidepressants, tricyclic antidepressants and glucocorticoids can be used as uh, anti-vertigo drugs. So next time you have a vertigo you just need to go to the local pharmacy and ask for any over-the-counter counter drug and I hope that will help you. I'm just joking, don't do that. Uh, that's all for this lecture. Thank you.